Hey, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today I want to take a look at an example from section 2.3. Uh, this is similar to the homework problem from uh, number 13 in my math lab. And it says, find the following limit or state that it does not exist. So uh, with most of our limits, the first thing we always try to do is uh, plug in the value that x is approaching. So this is the limit as x approaches 65 of x minus 65 divided by the square root of x minus the square root of 65. So when I plug 65 in there, I'm going to end up getting put my pencil on. This ends up giving me a 0 over 0. And what is 0 over 0? That's the indeterminate form. Uh, and the indeterminate form tells me I can keep on going. It usually tells me I can factor something out or I can manipulate the function in order to cancel something out or in order to use some other type of formula or property uh, in my toolbox. So uh, let's see what we can do with this problem right here. Um, now if I were to get a non-zero over zero, uh, that would mean, like for example, 3 over 0 or pi over 0. That would mean that uh, that the limit was undefined. But a 0 over 0 does not mean that. It just means that uh, it's indeterminate and we, we can usually keep going and still find a limit in many of these cases. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this function. x minus 65 minus 65 over square root of x minus the square root of 65. All right, and you might look at that and say, well, shoot, I mean, there's, there's nothing really to, uh, to factor here. And uh, not only that, but uh, I mean, there's these square roots down here, and there's no square roots are there. I mean, well, what the heck do I do? Well, one tool um, that's very useful to have in these situations is to be able to um, multiply either the top or the bottom by its conjugate. What the conjugate is, is you just take the plus or minus in the middle of two terms. So for example, if you had an a plus b, then the conjugate would be a minus b. And you just change it, and vice versa too. So a minus b then would become a plus b. So that's that's the conjugate. And the nice thing about the conjugate is that when you multiply them together and you foil them together, uh, the inner terms and the outer terms will cancel out, which when you're dealing with square roots will often, will always um, get rid of the square roots, and uh, you know, which is nice in a lot of cases. So since we have square roots down here and we don't have them up here, um, that very well may give us something to to use to cancel out this x minus 65 term, which uh, we're probably going to end up seeing that they, they made this very specifically because it'll end up canceling something out down here. So let's do that. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the square root of x minus the square root of 65, which is the square root of x plus the square root of 65. So times the square root of x plus the square root of 65. All right, and then we have to multiply the bottom by the same thing. Square root of x plus the square root of 65. All right, and that's going to equal. On the top, I'm going to keep this factor. Uh, why? Because I've done a bunch of these, and I know that we're probably going to end up canceling something out. And if I multiply it together, it's going to end up being a big old mess. Plus the square root of 65. And on the bottom, once again, since this is uh, the difference of squares, uh, if you multiply the inner terms and the outer terms, they're just going to be opposite signs of each other, which cancel out. So we're just looking at the first term squared. So the square root of x times the square root of x is just x. And then we have a minus, and then the last term squared. So the square root of 65 times the square root of 65 is just 65. So, hey, what do you know? We have a common term on the top and the bottom, which is x minus 65, which cancels out. 
just leaving us with the square root of x plus the square root of 65. All right, so now we try it again. We plug that square root of 65 back in. So we're going to get the square root of 65 plus the square root of 65. Alright, which should give us just what, 2 square roots of 65? Alright, and last thing, uh, when you actually put it in the problem, the first part uh, in my math lab says to simplify the given limit. So they actually want you to put uh, this part in here first, and then uh, this will be your final answer there. All right, if you have any questions, let me know, and have a great rest of your week.